Hi everyone, I'm Diane Monig. I'm a transition manager here at the ARC of Northern Virginia. I'd like to welcome you all today to our webinar, Programs at the Wilson Workforce and Rehabilitation Center. Let me introduce you to James Hall, the Director of the Career and Workforce Division at the WWRC. Prior to his position, he held assistant principal positions in Augusta County, Virginia, and in his previous life, he was a special education teacher for many years in public schools here in Northern Virginia. He brings a wealth of experience and knowledge, and we're so excited to have him here today. This presentation is being recorded, and the recording along with the PowerPoint slides will be emailed to you. I'll also share with you links to the ARC of Northern Virginia's transition points guides, securing a future for your child with a disability, and entering the world of work. Both of these guides have lots of practical information about um, employment programs and also programs at the WWRC. A few logistics for today, you're all muted, so please use the chat box or the Q&A box to type your questions, and I'll be monitoring those. And just if you have a question, just go ahead and type it in, but we'll be taking questions at the end. And with that, thank you, James, and let's get started. Great, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. We'd like to welcome everyone to the post-secondary programs presentation from WRC. I do have a PowerPoint that I'll be able to share with you all, but I'm very happy to be able to speak and really meet virtually with you all today because Northern Virginia has a special place in my heart, lived up in Chantilly and also Woodbridge. And so definitely is a little piece of home. We will go ahead and get started because you don't need to know about me because this is about you and how to help your loved ones and friends and families. But looking at our agenda today, looking at the history of Wilson Workforce and Rehabilitation Center, WWRC, so I'm going to use that from now on because it's a mouthful. So we'll look at the history, also look at WWRC today, some of the things that we're able to offer, and some of our services, specifically vocational evaluation, our PERT program, which is for high schools, our PREP program, which is for post-secondary, vocational training, driving, and if we have time, I know this could take a lot of information, looking at OT, PT, and assistive technology. But kind of who I am, and Diane did a great job of introducing me. I do have experience as a special ed teacher in my uh, prior career, in addition to an administrator. And so I've been all over the Commonwealth, specifically in Fairfax County, Augusta County, Albemarle County, and now I'm at the Wilson Workforce and Rehabilitation Center. And our positions here with the Career and Workforce Development Division, uh, looking at the way it works as kind of a central office position and how we help a transition assessment and our education. But what is the Wilson Workforce and Rehabilitation Center? How do we get that long name? Uh, it really goes back to uh, how we started out. And we started off as an army hospital in the 1940s. And so we, our whole goal is to help individuals with disabilities go to work in essence, to create personal independence through employment. We have two funding sources through the Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services called DARS and the Virginia Department of Education, the VDOE. So we are underneath the state operated programs underneath the VDOE. We also are accredited and we are Council on Occupational Education. That's our accreditation. And we're also of course underneath the VDOE. And over the next couple of years, we're looking at getting certified by CHEV, which is the State Council for Higher Education Virginia. We are a one-stop shop. Our goal is to have everything here on campus, the OTPT, our education, our transition, our assessment. We are the only center in the entire state of Virginia. So we're lucky to live here in Virginia and there's only eight of us in the entire nation. Some of the other states are Michigan, Kentucky. We also have Georgia, Nebraska. So that's who we are. So we wanna make this Presentation, a little interactive, have some visuals going back to the teaching days. And even though it's consumers, I'm going to use the word students because sometimes consumers, it's a little uh, sterile, but that is the legal definition for DARS, but we're going to call them students because when they come here, we educate. We don't train, we educate. So our average age is 18 to 23 post-secondary, the majority of our population. It is a living and learning environment 
So our students are able to come here anywhere from a five day, which is a program for evaluation vocaval up to 11 months. The students are referred for referred by the Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services, DARS, but not the local school division. So if you do have a family member or loved one at the local school division at the IEP meeting, have them contact the local DARS field office. So kind of our history. This is a picture of our original setup, the World War II Army Hospital. And how did it get started in Fishersville, Virginia? So we're located right at the intersection of Interstate 81 and Interstate 64 in Fishersville, closer to Stanton. Well, it really worked really well because in World War II over in Europe, when soldiers would get hurt, they actually would be shipped to Norfolk. Well, of course, we all know there's a naval base there. And so they get on the train at Norfolk and would be shipped here because it was far enough away from the blast zone and offered that psychological and emotional safety too. And land was cheap and we're in the middle of the valley. And so World War II, we were helping soldiers rehabilitate to be able to enter back into the workforce because most soldiers are 18 to 23 uh, when they're going to war. So that's how we got started. We've continued that since 1947, but that's our original picture. I wanted to show you all what it looks like today. And so we used our drone and we do have a drone unit in one of our programs to be able to make this come alive. So we do have over here our Birdsall Hoover where our OT and PT and related services they're able to provide that. We also have this L-shaped building, which is recently undergoing a $28 million renovation. So the state believes in us and we're here to stay. And this is where we house our education programs. We also have an auditorium for our graduations. We also have recreation because as you know, students need something to do at night. Uh, they <laughs> need that living and learning environment and provide lifelong healthy habits. We also have dorms. And the dorms are over here and we can hold up to 400 students. Of course, due to COVID, we have around 100, 130 students currently, but our average daily membership ADM is 300. And again, we call them students because once they get here, we're educating them out in the DARS office. You may hear the word consumers, but please know it's the same thing as sending them. So our mission, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in essence, our goal is to help individuals with disabilities create personal independence through employment. And that starts at pre-employment transition services, all the way through the education, through exiting with our partners and ours. Well, look, uh, we have a vocational evaluation. So you're going, how does that help us? Uh, what do we need to know before? Well, we love vocational evaluation because it is a strength we find the knowledge, skills, abilities, and what a student can do. A lot of times, and I know um, from personal experience, my oldest daughter is on the spectrum. And so I've had this personal experience that sometimes we have uh, students, uh, what they can't do. And so we look at what they can do, their strengths, abilities, and aptitudes. And the evaluation, and we can look at services, we can look at trades, we can look at business. So we have different job families that you can be assessed for. And these are actual pictures. And this one's kind of interesting. I like it because this is a Valpar. And so this is measuring manual dexterity. And we have one of our staff members, you have to take this plastic piece and put it on a metal rod and put it in this hole while it's spinning around. And so you have to do that for 20 minutes and it has stamina, has manual dexterity, hand-eye coordination. In addition, we have some norm references, which is right here to make sure saying, okay, you were able to do this 50% of the time. It looks like you have the ability to go into manufacturing. So these evaluations are critical in knowing the next step in the program. We also have an evaluation for child care. We do have a credential in our paraprofessional, so parapro instructional aid. We also can assess for cosmetology. 
So in the vocational valuation piece, that allows us to know the next step. Well, let's first start if you are a high school student, and this is our PERT program, the post-secondary education rehabilitation and transition program. This has been around since 1984, and this is a transition program jointly funded with the VDOE and DARS. And so students are able to come here right now because of COVID for one week for up to five days. And so yes, they will miss their school, but you would work with, of course, the IEP case manager to be able to have that as part of the transition plan. But some of the questions and answers, what's out there for me? What are my talents and strengths? What types of jobs might I enjoy doing? What do I need to learn to live on my own? So this is while they're in high school for a one week program where they're coming here and we do operate year round and we do have slots allotted per area. In Northern Virginia, we have a fall, we also have the spring. We also have some slots in the summer if you're not able to be able to come during the school year. Some of the prerequisites for the high school program, you have to be 16 or above, usually this is a sophomore year, and you have to have an IEP or 504 because for DAR services, again, the Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services, you have to be an individual with a disability. Well, if you have an IEP or 504, you pretty much automatically qualify. You also have to be selected by the local transition team. And so we have transition counselors throughout the entire state that works with each region to determine who gets to go where. There are 132 school divisions in the state. We serve up to 500 students through our PERP program. So the majority of the school divisions get between three and four students. Some of the larger ones, Fairfax, uh, Prince William get a little more, six to 10, but please know it's very competitive. In the 2030 vision, we do wanna grow the PERP program because we know there is a need up there. The length again, five days because of COVID, the services that you'll receive in our PERP program, you'll receive vocational evaluation, you'll receive an independent living skills assessment, and you'll also receive social and interpersonal skills. And if my internet connection is a little stable, it's because I'm on a virtual private network. So just let me know if it uh, kind of gums up on you. Well, let's say the PERT program, you come for a week, you love it. You wanna come back to WWRC. We do have a prep program and this is post-secondary. So after they graduate high school to prep for the workforce. And this is really a foundation on soft skills because soft skills not only allows you to get the job, but also maintain it and obtain it. And the three goals that we look at in the prep, secure and seek employment, increase awareness of interpersonal interactions and expand and enhance personal management skills. This program is a little longer. It is nine weeks. So in the PERT program, you're looking at one week. Then we're stepping up to the next program, PREP, which is nine weeks. And so we have three modules, pre-employment skills. We're looking at work behavior, some attitudes, your job seeking skills, effective communication. You have interpersonal skills, again, self-determination, self-advocacy, disability awareness, and your personal management skills, looking at money skills, leisure skills, laundry assessment, kitchen safety, time management. And so these are all three weeks long. Well, let's say you've gone through the prep program, which is one week. I mean, sorry, the PERP program, which is one week. The prep program, which is nine weeks, then you'll be able to enter our vocational training or our CTE, career and technical education programs. These are the ones that are averaging between seven to nine months with the longest one being 11 months. And so some of our areas, we have auto mechanics where you can be an auto service technician. We also have manufacturing. And this is a picture of our actual manufacturing lab where you can have your manufacturing specialist or manufacturing technician one. In the past, we've had a very strong partnership. We were the Virginia Manufacturers Association Partner of the Year. And this is a setup of one of our critical thinking activities, which was water filtration. And this is working on processing lean, six sigma, and some of the aspects you'll have in manufacturing. And I want to show you a video that the career pathways 
for individuals with disabilities grant. This was a multi-state grant, roughly a couple million dollars that we had with Tennessee, with Kentucky, with Nebraska, with Georgia. And so they made a video for, for us of what we were able to do with our manufacturing program. So I'll let them do the talking, enough of me. James, the audio isn't coming through on the video. James, can you hear me? I think we froze up. Let's see. James, can you hear me? The audio uh, is not coming through on the video. The audio is not working? Correct. Well, usually we problem solve on that piece um, from there, but I'm not quite sure because I can hear it from my end, but not on your end. So let me see if I can. We'll try it one more time. And if not, Diane, just let me know if it okay. does or does not work. We still can't hear anything. No. Well, on that end, I'll probably just have to move on because I've done everything I can in terms of turning okay. the, the volume all the way up from that's my fine. end. If it's a separate video, and I'm maybe sorry it's about something... that. No, that's okay. If it's a separate video, maybe it's something we can send out um, additionally. Yes, and this will be also in the PowerPoint that you guys will be able to receive. So this yeah. will be embedded in there because it does play when you're able to do that. Sorry about that. That's that was very impactful because you're able to hear from our <laughs> students and our parents. But it's okay. We will continue on. Uh, some of the other training programs that we have are IT, where you're able to look at A plus certification. We also have a repair shop to be able to do the hands-on piece. And we also have a Microsoft Technology Associate through Microsoft, through our partnership. And this is an actual picture of one of the rooms. And there's plenty of them because IT is pretty hot right now. We also have a business program where we have a general office administrative assistant. And we also have our partnership with Microsoft and Microsoft Office Specialist. In addition, we have food service where we have a cook's assistant, kitchen assistant, and dishwasher. We also have our own cafe and we have two kitchens and we serve lunch every day to be able to have the hands-on to know the speed, the intensity, and just the customer service skills. And a lot of our staff love coming. We're also open to the public. So if you're ever in the area, come by Fishersville and WWRC and we can serve you lunch. We also have health occupations. And this is an actual picture of some of our students practicing on each other. We have the credential of a certified nurse aide CNA and personal care aide through the Virginia Board of Nursing. We currently have a 100% pass rate on these tests. And so we're quite proud of that. We also have materials handling. 
And I know this picture is a little dated from 2016 when former Governor McAuliffe, but we wanted to show you the type of support we have from the state because the person on the left is the governor, former governor, but the person on the right, he is actually from CVS corporate. And CVS, as you see all the shops, all the stores, all the advertisements, a $66 billion company. Well, they were able to have a partnership with us. And this is one of our students to work with CVS Health on specifically logistics and our pre-pharmacy aid. And so if you have anything with CVS, I'll put a plug in there for them. Please help support them because they have a partnership with us and our parent agency DARS throughout the whole state for externships and internships. We also have an external training option if we do not have a specific program, well, possibly we could work locally in the community throughout the state to offer. An example, let's say coal mining. We do not have coal mining in Fishersville, Virginia. Our topography does not allow that, but it doesn't mean in Wise County or Dickinson County or Smith County that there's not an opportunity that someone would want to learn coal mining that we could set up an internship down there. And so that is our external training option. Same thing with oceanography or aquaculture out in the Tidewater area. We can't do that in Fishersville, but maybe we can work with partners in the Tidewater to be able to set up an on-the-job training experience. Some of the credentials that we have, due to the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, you have to have credentials, you have to have career pathways, and this has really changed the game for us in education, not only the secondary level, but post-secondary level. And the credentials help open the door on the resume, but also give you the theory and the science, and then we try to give the art. Some of our industry recognized credentials, we have a partnership with Microsoft. We also have customer service certification through the National Retail Federation. We have OSHA 10, Certified Logistics Associate, Manufacturing Specialist, Surf Safe Handler and Manager Level, CRC. And these are just a few of our credentials that we have. Our goal is to have our students leave with the industry recognized credential in addition to an internship when they leave WWRC. Some of our related services that we have with driving, as we all know, driving is a big barrier to employment. My daughter yesterday at 18 years old finally got her learner's permit and we are happy for her because it's each individual in their own time but I can personally re relate to be able that transportation need. And so we have driving evaluations to see if it's appropriate. And some of the things that we evaluate on, the vision, perception, cognition, motor skills to be able to obtain a driver's license. We also have a learner's permit class and that could lead to a driver's license. And the reason we have the DMV up here, we have such a need, we actually bring DMV to us. They have a mobile bus that travels around. Well, they just park in our parking lot to help our students. So they come to us and we appreciate that partnership. And some of the recommendations that could come from our OT driving services, they could recommend a learner's permit class, which is one month long with three classes a day. It's pretty intense, but it allows us to get that learner's permit in one month. A behind the wheel training, let's say you have your learner's permit and then you wanna do behind the wheel we do have VDOE certified driving instructors. And it's usually a month to six weeks long and you have two sessions a day in the morning and afternoon. We try to go above the minimum. And then we also can look at how do we have assistive technology and adapt driving equipment to allow people to drive. And then we try to get a medical clearance with the DMV support. And I know the last time the video didn't work, so that's on me, I'll try it one more time. We can play a little of it because sometimes you just need to see it. And if the words don't come through, that's okay. We'll just see a couple minutes because we wanna show how our driving visually can help individuals with disabilities.
And I know if the sound didn't come through, you can at least see the visual. And again, with a drive, and you always look at what they can do. Uh, George Dennehy, he had no arms. They said he couldn't drive. But when you look at what you can do, he had the flexibility in his hips and his arms to be able to drive. And one thing we wanted to note and show is this assistive technology actually was very, very low cost. The only thing that he needed was right through here, some tape on the steering wheel so his foot wouldn't slip off. And then they just had to extend the blinker. So in essence, to be able to drive, and usually the modifications are pretty pricey, here they're very affordable. So now he's able to get to work and do what he needs to do. And again, I know it didn't have the sound, but we needed to see it. And I also wanted to show some of our success that we've had. And so we do have to keep statistics. We're not just a feel good story. We get outcomes, we get results. So over the last three federal fiscal year, approximately 60% of our students and consumers have found employment for at least 90 days. And that's our goal because we have to measure one year after they leave, are they employed at six months and 12 months? What are their median earnings? at six months and 12 months? Have they retained a credential? Are they still retained in their job? And so we do have measures and so we're quite proud of them. And as you saw in some of the video, there's roughly 60 million people in the US that have a disability. And there are between 18,000 and 20,000 consumers at a time, depending on the referrals in DARS and that's our state parent agency. And then at WWRC, we serve between 2,200 and 2,500 each year in our programs. We do run year round and we take breaks at Thanksgiving in addition to Christmas. And I know we're around 11.35. And Diane, I wanted to come back to you because I know we probably have some questions that we can answer. And if we have time, we can go on to some of the other things if we do have time for OT and PT. Okay, sounds good. Let me see. There was one question early on. Um, originally, you had put up that you serve um, people generally 16 to 23. And there was a question, do you serve people older than that? Yes, we can serve any adult who's eligible. But our average age is usually 18 to 23. But a lot of times, our students who come back, let's say in their 40s and 50s, they may have had, let's say, just an accident. Uh, we've had one person who fell off a hayloft, broke his back. He was in a wheelchair. And so I had to come back and redesign his career. We've also had others who may have had a stroke. And so sometimes it's retraining, finding new careers, but we can accept any adults. Good question. Uh, here's another one. Do you need to attend PERT to go to prep? No, you do not. Now we recommend it because we found our longitudinal study when you have your PERT program, your prep program, your vocational training, the outcomes are so much better, but you can come for any of them. We just recommend it. Okay. How do you move from prep to the vocational training prep? Uh, how do you move from prep to the vocational training courses? So they look at the vocational evaluation did the evaluation say you have the skills, abilities, and aptitudes for that program? And sometimes uh, that's where we have some tough conversations uh, because we do have to be real. An example I always give, we always have someone who wants to be a professional football player, but yet they may have a traumatic brain injury. So we're never gonna say never, but we need to look at the realistic piece. Well, you do like sports, you do have like athletics, maybe you can go into business and become sports analytics or something similar. We don't wanna be the dream killer, but also realistic from that piece. And so we look at the vocational evaluation. We also look at the supports in the community. If you wanna become a coal miner, you're gonna to have to go to Southwest Virginia, but you live in Tidewater and you don't wanna move. So we try to say, okay, let's look at the job market. So we look at a lot of varieties and factors, your community support, do you have transportation? But the average out of 24 students in prep, an average of 17 go into vocational training. We try to make it accessible. How do we go about finding out the costs associated with these services? 
Great question. Well, one thing that we love about anything public, public education, public transportation, you would go to your local DARS office and there's one in every community and file eligibility. And usually the services are either free or depending upon your ability to pay, uh, the most I've seen are maybe up to $300. And so that's a great option <laughs> of what we have. We try to make it affordable because we are state funded. Think of it as um, if you're going to public school, yes, going to public school is free, but you may have to do a technology fee. <laughs> My son broke his screen. Okay, on his Chromebook, okay, $30 fee. for. So there's some aspects, but it's very, very affordable. Excellent. Okay, I have, here's another question. My daughter completed the PERT program during the summer of 2019. She was scheduled to attend the prep program last fall, Due to the pandemic, she was not able to attend. Who should I contact to find out when her prep program will start? Um, I would work with your DARS counselor because as you know, pandemic put us way behind uh, because we have a wait list of around a thousand for the center in prep. It's a little smaller, but definitely work with your DARS field counselor to find out that date because they'll be able to work with our admissions. But yes, that's one of the unfortunate things of the pandemic. We're about a year behind on meeting the needs of the entire Commonwealth. But don't worry, we'll get there. We will get there. So that, that long waiting list of a thousand, is that primarily because of COVID and how everything was shut down? Do you normally have a long waiting list? Yeah, our waiting list is usually around 800-ish. Oh, okay. Because again, we're the only one in the entire state. And when you have 7 million people in the state, okay. and let's say 15 to 18,000 in DARS, you, you know, the, just the numbers. Now, if we had a WWRC in every single community, it'd be great. But it's just because we're the only one. So there's always going to be a little backup. What would be the next step for a DARS consumer to join the nine week prep program? Uh, they would go with their ours counselor and put an application in for the prep program. And is prep open to individuals who are no longer in high school? Yes, prep is post-secondary and PERT is the high school. I know they're so similar. <laughs> I know the names are just... <laughs> uh, let's see, when you put your paperwork in, for a let's see, when you put in your paperwork for a vocational assessment, how long is the wait until you can attend WWRC? Gotcha. In VocaVal, and so I'll give you the, the good old days before COVID, we could do 30 vocational evaluations a week. So it's a little faster in VocaVal. Right now it's up to 14. And so it's probably a couple months, three to four months for the VocaVal, probably at least. James, there's another question I was writing. I was taking a note while you were talking. Um, do you have programs related to animal care? We do, and that's through our external training option. And we do have animal care attendant. And we actually, uh, it's kind of cool. It's a popular program. And we have great names such as uh, One Stop Pet Shop and others. And so we work with that business and with our instructor to create that customized program. So what do you feel the animal care, animal attendant would need to be able to get a job? But yes, we, we do have that program. Excellent. Uh, let's see. When, let's see. When do you anticipate the population or acceptance WWRC will transition back to full capacity? We'll leave that to uh, the CDC and VDH and others who make that decision. Um, and I'd like to open now, but of course we can't. And it's really dependent upon the COVID procedures. It looks so, I have, I think there are three more questions. Um, okay. It looks so difficult to get in. So is it only the high functioning disabled people that have a chance to get in? So we do have an order of selection in DARS. And those with the most significant disabilities are at the front of the line, followed by those with, you know, the least common or low incident. 
So DARS does have a hierarchy in how they determine that. That doesn't mean you won't be able to get it, it'll just be a longer wait time. And I wish we had a better answer for that, but unfortunately we don't. We just need more WWRCs built. So petition the General Assembly to give us more funding to build more facility. Um, okay, let's see. I'm not currently with DARS at this time, though I was before. Can you use the Virginia Education or another referral to access training to the Woodrow Wilson Center? You, um, you would have to go back to your DARS and be found and reapply and be found eligible again, because we only accept referrals from DARS. Great, thank you. There was one other question about emails, but I will send out my e email information um, when I send out the slides and the recording of this. And I, I think James's information is on this slide as well. Yes, correct. Right there in front of us, okay. So that's all the questions we have for the moment. If you wanted to continue with the presentation, people can still uh, type into the chat box and we can go back. Oh, definitely, because we want to show a few other things that we have. I know we want to hit the big hitters. And that's why I put if time, <laughs> you know, some of our <laughs> other related services. Uh, with assistive technology, of course, that's big anywhere. And it's looking at how do we create that access to the curriculum. So we try to do an AT assistive technology assessment at the beginning hopefully during the beginning of the program so you can learn to do it and then actually apply it when you're able to leave WWRC. We don't want it one and done, but actually a lifelong learning skill for assistive technology. And some of the things that we found work well, alternative keyboards. And this is if you, let's say a vision, you know, I like the one on the right because it's real big. I can hit it with my fingers easy and I can see it. Let's say visual learners, we have some on the top left which have colors. The one in the bottom left I really like because it makes people think, they're like, how did you get a keyboard broken apart? Well, this came about because let's say someone has one arm or one person has one arm who's longer than the other. It allows you to still type. So it's that accessibility piece. We also have OT, occupational therapy. How do we have leisure and lifelong learning skills to be able to live independently? A few things to point out. If you look back here, you see this mirror and it's at an angle above the stove top. Well, that's if you're in a wheelchair, you're able to see if the stove is on. Well, I'm thinking that is great when my kids were little on universal design, man, if we just had that mirror there so the kids could see it, it's built on that anyone can use. We also have this person needs help with pouring. Well, here's the device. This person's making muffins and they have one hand, well, we can use the left hand. So again, looking at the independent living aspect of OT. We also have physical therapy. And this is where you're working on strength, mobility, training. A perfect example, let's say you're an auto mechanics and you have the skills, you have the abilities, but you may not have the strength to lift a 45 pound tire. We will try to put you on a weight program as appropriate to be able to lift that tire because that's a barrier to employment. How do we break down that barrier? And we also have other aspects working on uh, some walking, some strength. And these are specialized equipment to be able to just work your body in general. And you do not have to be in a wheelchair. It could maybe poor muscle tone. And this is after an evaluation. So not everyone who comes here gets PT or OT, but it's based upon the evaluation that they do. And they can do a work performance evaluation that works on your stamina, your ability to bend, um, also to pick up, to stoop. And it's pretty intense, but it does give us some good assessment on what we need to do. And so that was the extra aspect I wanted to show on the OT and the PT piece. Let me. Are there any questions in the chat? Yeah, let me see. Does anyone have any other questions? James, this was fantastic information. Um, we have had DARS representatives come and do webinars and workshops for us all the time, and they're fantastic. But families always have a lot of questions about 
the WWRC. And um, this is the most information we've ever gotten. So thank you so much. Uh, let's see. No, thank you all. <laughs> Here's, let me see. Here's a question. So with, will students with disabilities who um, have varying levels of ability, are they um, lumped together in like um, abilities or, or spread out? Uh, they'll be spread out uh, due to the fact that because of our rolling admission, let's say someone comes into auto mechanics in January as a cohort. And then let's say another cohort comes in in April. You're going to have everyone working together uh, from, from that piece. You may have a roommate who may have a disability more severe than or more high incident than your own. So we look at trying to make it a community living learning. So we really try to have not the same groups, but heterogeneous, a little different, not homogeneous, not the same. And it's really kind of cool when you have individuals who are from Northern Virginia, from Richmond, from the Tidewater, work with those from Southwest and live together. It's really their college experience. And then can you touch a little bit on what campus life is like now as a result of COVID? Gotcha. So due to COVID, each person has their own room. And so they, some people actually loved it. Now it's tough to serve the number of people you want to, but they each get their own room. And then the classrooms, of course, the social distancing mm -hmm. and the masks. At night, we still have recreation, but again, social distancing. We still have the pool, uh, the dining hall. We still can do that. Again, the social distancing and the masks, but you're able to go out, uh, go into town, Harrisonburg, Charlottesville, Waynesboro, and Stanton. So basically the life that we're all living together, we're living here too. Great, let me just look. I don't think, does anyone have any more? I don't see any more. Oh, here, wait a second. Uh, so I'm from Northern Virginia. If I do the prep program, what flexibility will I have to see my family? They live two and a half hour drive from your location. Well, pre-COVID, you know, they could come visit you. Uh, you could go visit them anytime. Uh, with the COVID piece, we do try to limit some of the visitors, but it doesn't mean that they can't visit, but just know it's a little tighter. And so just like a college campus or anything else, you can go and leave and visit and people can come and visit you. I definitely would check with our admissions before someone would come visit you just to make sure, or our dorm staff. Can you clarify or expand on what falls under significant disability for admittance priority? Yes, and so DAR's definition, that would be if you had two or more disabilities that have lasted longer than six months. And some of that could be work stamina. It could be a physical disability. So it doesn't quite align the same as special ed determination in public schools. It actually is even broader mm -hmm. uh, from that piece. And so they would look at if you had two or more disabilities lasting longer than six months in essence, and then that would put you in the most significant disabled. And I know it's such a horrible term <laughs> on, on that, but that's the DARS nomenclature. So vocabulary. And then sometimes all categories are open, which means you could serve anyone on the list. And that's usually due to our funding from the state. Thank you. Let me see if there are, okay, there's no other questions in the Q&A. We have uh, someone that had a question. Um, since you said that different disabilities are mixed, I'm concerned my daughter would be in classes or sessions with someone who had more disabilities and per perhaps lessons that wouldn't pertain to her. Well, that's just um, good teaching, differentiate the instruction. And so an example, 
uh, you have that in every education. Uh, if you go to third grade reading class, you have a person reading on an eighth grade level, a person reading on the first grade level. That's up to our instructors to the, adapt the instruction to the person of where they are. So that's how we look at that um, in the education okay. piece. Any other last questions? Okay. I think that is it. So just as a reminder, um, we're gonna send out the recording um, and also the slides, and I'll send out some additional resources that the Arc of Northern Virginia has that might be helpful. So if anyone has last questions, now is the time. <laughs> Otherwise, we will say, I think that's it. So I will say thank you, James, so much for spending the time with us today. This was absolutely fantastic information. No, I thank you all for reaching out and inviting us and we're here to help the best we can. And I just, again, have a heart for Northern Virginia. You tell all those uh, people up there, I said hello, especially those uh, up in Chantilly, uh, where, where we were. We'll make sure we visit this next couple months. And Diane, if you need me to stay on afterwards, I can, if need be. No, I think that's it. We'll close out and then we'll email about getting the PowerPoint presentation. I think that will be it. Okay, let me, I'll stop recording this. Okay.